Welcome to 032 Conversations, the podcast where we talk to creatives, see how they live, and how they do their work. I'm your host, Carlo Villarica. A few weeks ago, I took a trip to Singapore and I, I underestimated... <laughs> I underestimated how much things cost there. Like, I brought, like, 3,000 pesos or something, and I spent 850 pesos on the terminal fee in Cebu. And when I got to Singapore, I had the rest of the money changed. I think it was, like, 50 Singapore dollars or something. And when I took the uh, the cab to my sister's, to my sister's flat in Singapore... The cab driver, the cost of the cab was like half of the 50 Singapore dollars. <laughs> uh, so, you know, thank God for credit cards. But one of the fun things that we did in Singapore was uh, when when we travel, when I traveled there. So I was there basically to watch my niece. you know, And then traveled there. I had a sprained foot. I could barely walk. Like we tried to go to like the, we walked from her flat to the nearest 711 and my foot was burning one of the fun one of the nice things about singapore is that there's a lot of nice things it's a really really nice country but one of the nice things i liked about it was they had there's a service it's popping up all over the world right now it's like a public bicycles you know so it's like a city bike if you've heard of city bike or the one in singapore that we used a lot was this ofo and then you just you download their app, you scan it, uh, you scan the bicycle. You know they have like a QR code on the bicycle, and then you scan it, and then the bike unlocks, and then you can just use it. So the nice thing is, my sprained ankle very hard to walk, but the bike didn't feel like anything. I didn't need to put that much pressure on my foot, so. During the weekend, my niece and I, we just biked around Singapore. And it was a really nice way to see the city. And, like, super cheap, too. Like, I think one time we had the bike for uh, almost three hours. And then I think it charged us $2.50 Singapore. So, really cheap. I mean, considering the taxi costs, like, 25 Singapore dollars. And then... That was just a few minutes, and then we were able to do the the bike for just two dollars and fifty. Super cheap. We got to see, you know, I got to see a lot of Singapore for the first time, and and then we just uh, it was a good way to explore the city. I don't know if we'll see that anytime here in Cebu. It's still a very, I don't know. If that concept will work. The nice thing, I mean, the weird thing about it was that, you know, with Singapore, with the way that that OFO was uh, set up, is that you could just put the bike any, anywhere. So it's weird because you would see the bike like just anywhere, like in the middle of the street, on a sidewalk. So it was almost like garbage. <laughs> it looked, it was weird. Like you're just walking and it looks like a really nice manicured lawn and then there's like a yellow beat up bike there sometimes. But that said, you know, you don't always need to get a bike. If you're looking for some other mode of transportation, well, I am excited to tell you Wealth Bank, together with Toyota Team Cebu, are giving you a jaw dropping offer. There's the pre owned car fair 2018. Again, thank you, Wealth Bank and Toyota Team Cebu, for sponsoring the podcast. So, the pre owned car fair allows you to just, there's a whole bunch of cars there. I heard there's like 50 cars, and then they're all pre owned. If you want, you can just go there with a low down payment, fast on site approval with low interest rates. And then you can leave with a high-quality pre-owned car. It's going to be in Cardinal Rosales Avenue, corner Panglao Road in Cebu Business Park. So one of those empty lots is going to be filled with cars. Wealth Bank is going to be there. They're going to allow you to choose a car, get a loan right away, and then you can drive off on that car right, right there. That, that this the pre-owned car fair is going to be on September 26 to 30 in Cardinal Rosales Avenue, 
corner Panglao Road in Cebu Business Park. So if you're looking for a car and then don't want to wait till one of these public bike transportation stuff gets here, or, you know, it's kind of gnarly to bike on the road in Cebu. So if you want to look for a car, go to the pre-owned car fair, September 26 to 30, Cardinal Rosales Avenue, corner Panglao Road in Cebu Business Park. You know, I've been listening to podcasts for a while, I think four or five years now. And back then, no one, I didn't know anybody who's been listening to podcasts. The thing also with podcasts, it's not really like a social thing. You can talk about it with a friend, but you don't really know who's listening to podcasts. And so it's difficult to find people to, to talk about podcasts with, you know. It's like they were like a rare bird in the jungle. So imagine my excitement when I first heard about Dave Visaya. He has a business here in Cebu that revolves around podcasts. So what he does is he's a podcast engineer. So he edits podcasts for a living. People send him the audio. He edits it, gives it back to them, or even uploads it to their website automatically. And that's his business, man. So it's cool. So like I, at first I couldn't find I couldn't find anybody to talk about podcasts with and all of a sudden this guy is that's his that's his livelihood. And he started a podcast called The Big Picture. So it's n- another exciting thing for me is there's another person in Cebu uh creating a podcast. So the more podcasts the better. Um it's still like a super small niche and but you know if you're looking for something another Cebu centric podcast check out the big picture we're going to talk about that in the interview and just give you a quick note the target interviews are usually like entrepreneurs so i've been in there they interviewed me i'm going to link my my episode with them to in the uh, show notes as well as anything else that we talk about in this podcast we talk about dave visaya's story how he started podcast engineers and the big picture podcast but more importantly we show the possibilities and, of course, the difficulties of entrepreneurship. Although he doesn't say it, his story is shows that it's possible to start a business without a huge capital, without having a, to put like a big, chunky, monetary investment in the beginning. That's one of the advantages right now of an internet business. Even 032, we barely put in any money when we started it. So he has a similar story in that sense. If if you've been thinking about starting something and then just worried about where it's going to go, hopefully this interview inspires you to do so. But before we get to the interview, if this is your first time listening to 032 Conversations, please subscribe to the podcast we have new episodes every Tuesday, and we're going to continue doing this until, I don't know, until it gets really boring. <laughs> it doesn't get boring. It's really fun to talk to people. Okay, here's the interview with Dave Isaya. It's the worst garage band. Ah, MOBA. I like Audacity. That's the first time I started using it. For podcasting. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, I like Audacity. I used to use, because I used to do like uh, audio recording for the band, for my band, Rescue Uh Hero, and I used to use... You're on a Mac, maybe Logic Pro? No, I'm not on a Mac. I'm on... Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, Yeah, um, Vegas or something. I forgot. But Mona, like it's too clunky for what I want to do. Like it's so... Audacity. What I what I liked about it is number one, it's free, and then number two, it's it seems very easy to work with. Mm. It it has like 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 it's bare. It's bare basically. Yeah, but the problem is if you want to if you want to put up a like an effect or something, mm. you have to write over the whole file. It's not like you can not like Vegas where you can you know you can disable the plugin and yeah, then it just yeah yeah. yeah it's like disabling a filter. I think it's the lossless thing. You could like, if you ever make a mistake, you can really go back 
Is that it? Is that how Audacity? More again, na ang yeah. Audacity. So like, if you make that's why it writes over the file. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So you can keep the main web file, but it'll it'll always write over and write over and write over. So if you at some point decide, oh, I need to go two steps back. You can't. You can't, na. Uh, I mean, uh, unless if you if you saved it. Ah, uh, separately. And then uh, wa na good, wa na good. Uh, so it's okay. annoying in that sense, but uh, yeah. but like for my purposes. Nah, it's okay. Podcasting is very easy to edit. Move it out. It's not like music, ba? Yeah, you don't have. Yeah, it's not like music. I'm more going indut na kayo, and then you turn on the guitar. I'm like, oh wait, oh, oh I gotta change something. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's not like that. But wait, um, just to start, Dave. Uh, please state your name and what you do. Just okay. So my name is Dave Visaya. I've I've been doing online work for the longest for the probably seven years now. So I started with uh, just the regular job, earning online, writing articles. Then eventually I was able to like got into podcasting. Wait a second. They got quiet. Yeah, there's too many. So we're in the house. <laughs> we're in my house. My phone's, phone's ringing. ringing. <laughs> my ankle's broken. No, it's not broken. It's sprained. Wait. I, I noticed buying. Uh, you you did this thing a few like yeah a few days ago. This gorilla camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. What is that? It's a one. It's in Mandawi Labugon. Oh. It's like a Spartan mini Spartan race. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Dingo, the kantao. Uh, I guess 200 participants at that time. So, it's fun. It's like 23 obstacles. Of course, I'm not... What I what I do with... You know, if you notice... I don't know if you've noticed my Instagram. I, you follow me. Mm. So, I, I... What I do is actually I enjoy most... Like, live the life that I really wanted to have, right? So, even if I'm not fit for Gorilla... Boot camp. Oh, I, I well. play. I mean, that's. Uh, I was like overweight and ob- I, I was obese basically on on my rating. So what I what I do usually with whatever would work with uh, with uh, with physical whatever goal I have. I, I place myself in a situation where I can't say no anymore. Mm. I put myself in dire situations. So like uh, boot camp, guerrilla boot camp. I saw this because I have this. Uh, like mountaineering friends, I, I did that as well just because of that philosophy. I put myself, I just booked a flight, like joined the group, and without any preparation at all. But yeah, because it, like you have to prepare within those months, so that's what I do most of the time with my with how I handle things because I'm I'm a procrastin master procrastinator. I super lazy, so like boot camp, it it forced me, like I I booked it a month ago. More, more or less. So, I knew I didn't have the capacity to do it. So, of course, they have this boot camp. You can train through the obstacles. So, I did like twice before that, and I encounter. I have to be really strict with my diet because I have to lose. When I first joined the the training, I can't lift my. I can't do the monkey bar. Ah, okay. I yeah, can't yeah. lift the. Like, There's like a rope climb. The know. rope climb. Oh, I can't. Okay. I can't lift myself. So I was like, how, how can I do this? So. Uh, but I joined the open category, so it's nothing like serious. You could help with each other. You're, You're not like racing. You're not, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. We're just doing it for fun. But the thing was, I, I challenged myself. So how can I? So I realized that I have a problem with my weight. I mean, mm. like I was like doing it. You know, I was with my. I was fine with my weight. You know, no one's telling me that I should lose weight. I mean, it's up to me. But the thing is, like having that, putting myself in that situation, I had to. I discovered OMAD. I like I research and you know what's OMAD? The the one meal a day thing. Oh yeah, yeah okay, so, okay, okay. So I discovered that, and we had an, a guy we interviewed on our podcast recently. So it somehow, even if I didn't really hit my goal in my Gorilla Bootcamp, it forced me in a situation where I am now. So I'm dieting for a month already, and I did like got the medal of it. That we're on up and category, so we have this. We helped each other carry. Yeah, so ourselves. you got like a you did a six k. <laughs> Yeah, that everyone's on a six k because the, the obstacle track was uh, yes, that, that was the length of the whole thing. What were the what were the obstacles? So like the usual, like if, I don't know if you've heard about Spartan race. Yeah, oh. So it's like the usual, like the, the wheel. You 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 jump over them. You flip it over. Oh, you flip the wheel. Yeah, ah, it's, yeah, cross, like, it's like more of a CrossFit. 
like me, what you do, what they do in the gym. So there's like, a there's a wall climb also. A rope yeah, there's climb. like a ladder climb and. Uh, Tiba like a kanang you swing on a on like a monkey bar, like monkey bar swing. Yeah, there's this like, like uh, yeah, you there's a wheel and you this like a round monkey bar thing and you jump over it. Oh yeah. So that that, that those were the things. That sounds like fun, but I grab it like I really would. I think I would enjoy yeah, that. You would have, except you have a. Oh yeah, I can't. I can't walk right, right now. now. But, <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but we did like it was. I could show you a video, but yeah, during because like we can't do monkey monkey bar, so we had someone carrying us. So that's like we had a right group of three, so it's fine. It was super had, like fun. a team. Yeah, yeah, we had a team. So uh, unless you don't, if you say no to it, then you got to do thirty burpees. And that's fine. Like I know more like when the I have, I have a friend who did the Spartan. He was telling me about it. He lingaw sa Oh, he had a lot of fun. So it's interesting. So you put yourself in a situation so that. You could, I guess that's one of the things that uh, you 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 struggle with personally, like yeah. kanang, maintaining my weight or you know, just oh, like the, doing like physical yeah. fitness type things. It's hard. I can't like. Uh, I tried going to the gym. Basically, I enrolled to a gym, but I can't. But I can't gym also. Yeah, I mean, who does that? I mean, oh, no, there's people. But there are gym. people who do, right? So, yeah, but like, if, like, for example, uh, you know, naman that I like to bike, diba? Right? So yeah. there's a reason why. I I did the bike because I don't like to exercise just for exercise sake. So now if I have to ride a bike to go from point A to point B, uh, it's not really I'm not really exercising. It's just part of my daily yeah, because you have to really go there. I, yeah, <laughs> I really have to get on the bike to 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 go to a certain location. So I know where you're coming from. Where I don't have the discipline also to just exercise. Like uh, I like to play basketball, and yeah, that's. I play basketball because I love playing basketball, no? So it doesn't feel like exercise. It's exercising, yeah. So that's interesting because I remember Sad Katung, in fact, the, when we reconnected for the first time was in a surf camp. Surf camp, yeah. So was a surf camp also something like that for uh, you? Something like that as well. Like, you know, you have to really lose weight or have at least the air to breathe and, <laughs> you know, a new puddle and all. So, like, you have to jog, like, prior to that, right? So... That I I put myself because I wanna I'm you know I want to put myself I want to experience the most of life basically right now, like unlike before I was like, you know just work and never play. Right now I I'm thinking of like when when's the right time because maybe I I should call it I had an accident before like I was in college I broke my like I was hit by a motorcycle basically mm. in the highway so. Really broke me, broke my left thigh. Okay. So I was just, I remember I was crossing the street and I was hurrying up because I want to watch a movie. And it's funny because I was like in college and I was still thinking of Naruto. <laughs> I watched that anime. Oh, the, the anime. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anime <laughs> I was like hurrying up. I bought this DVD and uh, like from, uh, from, <laughs> from somewhere and I was like hurrying up across the street. So, and all of a sudden this guy was driving in the middle lane hit me on on my left side thing was like i was facing there and i rotate 360 degrees i was still facing there and i like, really so broke after my... he hit you yeah i was like you was, turned 360 degrees just in the face, air. yeah i was like facing uh our house basically uh. and he was coming on my left side because I, I was already in the middle i was standing in the middle uh. then all of a sudden he came like beeping on the left side i was about to look here it's like that was it that was like a flash and I rotated, hit me, like he dragged me along with him. So I, I was facing there. When I got back, I was still, I was already like on my lap, still facing the road. He, wow, like, you turned 360 yeah. degrees, good. And I, and he dragged I, well, you first up. thing I remember is I was like, my, my, my thigh was already broken, so I can't feel anything. And I was like, where's my DVD <laughs> or something like that? Well, but but oh the thing God. was, the thing was like recalling it, if, if it happened to be that I was facing, there or anything like my head could have been hit because if I was facing the motorcycle and if I like flip, I could have hit my oh yeah oh. my head. So I was like, I'm kind of lucky like, in a way. Yeah, like... I th- realized that was like my second life already. So I I felt like you know at the snap of my like you know that instance where you were in a situation where you were so shocked like I, in that. At that moment when I was rotating for that 360, it felt so slow. Like it was bright at the oh, same yeah, time. Yeah, it was yeah. so, so it slow, but slow I, motion. and I can like remember, like it flashed to you, like what you what you've been doing in your mm. life. 
And you know. So that, wait, wait. Before that accident, what were you doing? So you were in college. I was just basically in college, like just taking uh, life for granted. Yeah, like you know, everything was planned out. I was in nursing. I, I thought that nursing was a thing, and you know, had a had a, a wonderful relationship with a girlfriend, and you know, but after that, uh, made me realize that you, you any you could. Life can be taken away from mm. you, like any time, right? Like no matter how young you are, or how you know we think about that. So I experienced that uh, period of my life where you know I, I didn't take life that much for granted. So, so well, that's a powerful experience early on. Yeah, huh? because like, I don't wish everyone to experience that. No, but you seriously, know, but, like, anang, people don't. Some I remember thing. I remember taking things for granted. Exactly. Anang, you know, because you just think. I remember, I really remember thinking I'm like, oh, I feel invincible. Like mm. nothing is gonna happen to me. Mm. No? And then experiences like that. Yeah. It's, will, a, it's, a, some, it's an eye opener. It's very eye opener. But you know, after that I was still in, I was very young. Yeah. So I still, you know, deal with life without without like you know, taking things for granted. I, I always I'm a guy who always needs to remind, you know, I I always take things for granted, basically, and I always keep myself reminded, which goes back to that point where I put myself, or I, those are, what I do mainly is just to remind me of what I really want or who I really want to become, so mm. that's why I joined Burilla Bootcamp, or if I, you know, traveling was all the thing, but sometimes you get, you get to, like, I don't know, you, you want to play safe, you know, I don't want to travel that much, and but the thing is, you... I book like ahead of time so that I uh, I force myself to to really, travel. Yeah, to travel. Yeah, okay. Let's get to that because I noticed I was looking through your Instagram. You have like a lot. You've been traveling a lot, but not that much. But yeah, no, but I like try. yeah, but you've been you've been a lot of places, but and yeah, like uh, I think also from your background, you know, like this is not this is not something that was you were kanang. How do I say it? You weren't. You did not inherit something. All of a sudden, you get to travel. All mm. of these. You, you, you created like a business for yourself that's able to pay for Mainly, for yeah. this and this lifestyle that you want, right? Yeah. So like you notice that uh, like being able to travel is very important to you. So that's where you spend your or like new experiences yeah, is new very experience important to you. Yeah. So that's where you spend your money. So like I want to be like I want so. We haven't talked about it yet, but let's get to it na lang. So, uh, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong lang, huh? So, your bread and butter is that podcast, podcast engineers. Yeah, yeah, mainly, yeah, but I do virtual assistant stuff, but it's more mostly related to Podcasting. podcast editing, podcast production, so. So, that's your bread and butter. Yes. Can you talk about it a little bit? So, uh, so, what I mentioned earlier, I was, I started with online thing, like, uh, writing stuff, right? And I had this virtual, because I tried learning web developing, but it's not really into me. So I tried to develop websites before, but it's not like, it's not my passion, something that I'm passionate about. So I, you know, I ended up with a job that's like more, mostly virtual assistance. So I do check the emails, do, Basic stuff mainly appointing, setting appointments, cleaning up the forums, doing support for the website. So I think it's like a lot of like that's like the that's a job now. That's a lot. <laughs> a lot of people have that job. Yeah, now. yeah. So like you can VA actually thing. earn from that, right? Yeah, more So I had this regular thing, like the client from outside that they, the that that's what they. I mean, I just handle mostly the mundane stuff for them. Mm. Then all of a sudden they have this podcast. They they were, I think at uh, episode. 40 something so they've been doing this podcast weekly podcast and they've been uh they're they're like big in the real estate uh industry so they they're like a forum and this is your boss that they, they mainly oh. they're they, i work for them so oh. this was my only job that, back then wait so that, before you didn't know what podcasting was basically i i do listen to a lot of podcasts i uh, i think the first podcast i've listened to uh, I think it was Radio Lab. I love oh, Radio science. Lab. Like, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I want to listen to them, and it's really nice. And uh, I tried to expand. I've listened to Brendan Bouchard and all, but uh, podcasting. I mean, they have their podcast, but I don't want to touch it or anything. It's just you know, they just have their podcast. I was focusing on my job. I was like very close minded at that time, and uh, you know, they were asking like, what What can I do more for the company so that you know. 
they can provide more as well for me. So I was like, yeah, maybe I could try podcasting. Or mainly, the podcasting thing was done by my boss. He was the one editing it. And you know yeah. what? Editing on editing a podcast really takes a while. Yeah, it sometimes, can take a while. especially if that if they were really specific Meticulous. on a topic, yeah. right? So they want to crush out anything that's promotional stuff, stuff like that. So my boss who hired me was doing that stuff, and he thought like I could delegate this <laughs> so uh, like he when he delegated to me like yeah I, I know about DAWs I know about you know yeah because you have uh, a music background yeah right? so I was in the band for the longest while I, I, I want to try creating stuff so I love doing I even call it audio blogs before so I love doing you know just random stuff with my guitar recording it and I love listening to it even if it's for my own consumption it's not a, for for the world out there but so I have a good background with uh at least I know how to cut audio you know mix it up improve it a bit so I have that a bit of a background so yeah I could do that and I learned that he was using this app called GarageBand so that's what he does and then you edit it so I I I did the work and when I edited it it was really it takes a while because he's not optimized for editing so it's not optimized for cutting if you cut it you have to like fade in the stuff you have to put some dots in it for garage bands it's very complicated so i thought this is a, i i've tried uh previous like daws before so i thought I, i'm gonna improve it but since i'm on a mac right now i, I want to use the logic pro one so i asked them to buy me basically logic pro uh. so but i tried the you know the, the bootstrap thing so i i, I tried the 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 logic pro and it's really made my it cut my work for like two hours or something yeah. so really sped up ed- everything and i i started to improve it i, I added stuff because i he gave me the freedom so now i'm i was like getting confident about doing the podcasting for them so the the podcast editing and podcast editing i've been doing that for a year and that's like I thought that we had, well, for a year at that point. Yeah, for mean, for them. Uh, yeah, you've been so. doing it for a lot longer than a year. <laughs> yeah, now. yeah. Uh-huh. At that point, yes. So, I thought like you know, it's it's uh, it's 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 just a job for me again. Like you know, I was like thinking very. So you're small. just thinking by in terms of like being a VA. Yeah, and just, just doing thinking this for like them. this and I added value for them. You know, they increased my salary and all. So, but the thing was, there's this guy from who was a colleague at mine outside, and they transferred the company and they started their own podcast as well. And they knew, and he knew that I was editing it. Like he approached me, he's like, "Can you edit our podcast as well?" Like you know, I don't have time basically because I was doing full full time. So I was thinking, uh, maybe I could like do something about this because people are asking. And I like so I did what I did was I like asked my cousin to work for it, <laughs> like do the work for sort the of person. And I like, can out. somehow like we cut the profit and all. And eventually it it came from there. Like why not? I should have started a brand and I call it Podcast Engineers, like online brand, and you know focus on that because I I took the leverage of my boss, the first one, the first podcast that they that they had because they were like dominating the real estate industry. So I was like maybe I could get this as a leverage so i was using it i've been editing the top podcast for for real estate in the u.s and all and eventually and so you asked him if you could use the yeah i can ask him in a, in a subtle way like I, yeah maybe you could do that <laughs> so I, I did that then. and uh eventually i got a couple of clients in real estate and expanded uh and i i you know got a lot more clients i was up Basically, I, I improved my profile in Upwork. So where that's where I guttered my clients, some of them, in uh, LinkedIn as well. Yeah. So, it, But you know, that's interesting. Okay, like, so in a way, you started this business. It kind of just happened. Like people were asking you to do it. And you get what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. you did not come up with the... Well, I was idea. not business-minded at all, no, right? Bobby, at first. No, but because, I, that's yeah. it, because, you know, uh, there's this... Um, there's... Uh, well, he's an author, but he's really the founder of CD Baby. See, Derek Sivers. Nah, I'm not familiar. Anyway, Derek Sivers, one of his rules in making, he has a really good book. I forget the name. No, but he has this good book. And then he says, kind of like, one of his rules is you only make a business when people ask you if they need the service. Like, if you're just sitting there and, like, people say, hey, because, like, that's how CD Baby was formed, man. Oh, really? He made CD Baby. Like, they used to sell. CDs online. So now CD Baby is like, if you want to put music up on Spotify, on iTunes, you mm-hmm. can go to CD Baby and now they're like an they're, aggregator. They're like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. But so, they started out selling CDs. 
And then, so he put it up there on CD. He started CD Baby, because he's a musician. He put up his, started CD Baby, and said, okay, I'm going to sell my music here. Mm. It's just my songs. And oh. then, and then all of a sudden, his friend from another band said, like, oh, can you, can you sell my CD also? And another friend said, can you sell my CD also? And then all of a sudden, he's like, wait, I'm putting in so much work. I better start charging people. <laughs> so the yeah, business yeah. kind of fell, yeah, I, fell to him, but like yeah. similar to you. That's what it reminded me of when I was hearing your story. Yeah, uh, yeah. You were just doing, you're doing the VA thing. Yeah, I was like, I, you know, I was, I've been working online ever since, and I thought you know, I earned big. I mean, I mean, it's earned good enough for me to. It was like a good salary. Yeah, it was good salary for for me staying at home, not paying for traffic or, you know, paying for gas to transfer from for working at you know somewhere in the city. So, I thought it was uh it was something I could I I could learn from and also in a way my boss was sort of like mentoring me because I was just replicating whatever he does like he hired a VA first so I hired my own first assistant like you know to uh, so that I could even I even passed on some of the job <laughs> but yeah so that thing I grew it some of them don't don't stay long some of them are project based or per episode based and that's okay. Uh, the thing is, uh, um, you have a whole system now in place because, yeah, uh, mainly like, you know, we use Google Drive and all. They just record and I do the, basically the rest. So I expanded to doing show notes, uh, cause you know, we do have the show notes page on their website. Also have the, uh, the, the web, uh, the updating the WordPress. So I do that. So not expanded from just editing the audio. Now I just, they just record, drop it in the file, in a shared folder. And I come up. I come up with. I I do the Libsyn as well. Upload everything. You upload there it now. You put the show it notes. Comes out under iTunes. So that's what I do mainly. So I've been doing that, and I form a, uh, you know, a good team as well to help me out. Mostly outsource, basically. So it works. It works. So. No, oh, that's cool because like, so, uh, so the, that's how you got your first few clients, right? Like they were you were already basically working for them. Well, that's the time I I had to invest on a website. Uh-huh. so I have to like uh, come up with a website. What's the website? It's podcastingjuniors dot com. So, right. so I, I I asked my friend to build it for me, and you know we had this website going on. We added testimonials and all, and and I aggressively like uh, because I I was I was there. I need to you know they don't come to you like directly. Like even if you have a website already, you have a Facebook page, they don't, people, Customers, clients don't come clients to you. Don't, don't, come to you. They don't, don't just pop up and show up. Yeah. Even if you have the best looking website, right? So I'm not saying I have the best looking website, but the thing is once you have it, some people think that they, I just want to build a website, you know, and it's there. People will come, but no. So uh, even if I had that, I was lucky with the first two clients, like uh, people asking me about it. It was really hard at first. Like, yeah. I had to like, I had to figure out ways to get people to know me, and I don't have the credentials yet, and I don't want to ask my first client because I work mainly work for them. I don't want to ask them like a good review, like pointing me. Yeah, well, you didn't you didn't ask for a testimonial from them. <laughs> yeah, at first I was really hesitant, but uh, what I what I did was I aggressively marketed it, like. I even remembered one time where I have to like search all iTunes, like people those who have not so good audio, and try to figure out their email address from from their website and all, and contact them personally and give them a sample. Like uh, I cut out one of their a uh, part of their audio, give them a sample and like improve it. Like you know you know what this is yours podcast before. Here's what I can do mainly. If you want this service, I can. You know, we can talk. I can oh get, wow! You know. you really so did we did that, that huh? hustling thing. That's a thing. lot of work. That's a lot. That's of work. a lot of work for uh, for several weeks, and I realized it didn't work. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> and then. So it didn't work, and you know, I tried several things, and mainly now it's more of like, uh, uh I think branding is one thing. You have to, I build up the web, uh, the podcast page, and I did like go traditional on online jobs, Upwork. So that's where I got. Most of my like early clients now, but now, you posted it on Upwork. No, you apply. You apply on. I just list. I just search on podcast editing. Or, ah, you apply. Yeah, you, you apply, you apply okay. and I just point them out to my website. So I'm not. Mm. I'm not a fan of. No offense to Upwork, but no, I'm not a big fan of Upwork 
you know, doing it on up. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Upwork, but I'm familiar, but I don't know the nuts and bolts. Like so, I don't so, know exactly what happens. So they, you, some, of, some of them you do on hourly rate, right? So you have a, an hourly rate, but they track your time. Mm. So you can't like do anything else. You can't. They do screenshots randomly, so you can't do anything. Uh, you know, you can't even delegate the task because you have to be the person doing it. So what I, I what I have is like I have like a, a system right now where. I have editors now who edit the podcast. So what I do is I'm more of like acquiring more clients now. I just uh, do Upwork. I just do sometimes. You're the sales get, and marketing. Yeah, mainly. Way, uh, yeah, with my with what I do now after two years of doing this. So now. Oh yeah, yeah. It should it should be noted that you didn't. It's not like you just did a few pieces of work and then all of a sudden <laughs> at first, it. man, I was the one you doing did everything. It. Yes, and. And you know, you know, when you hire someone, they they're not really passionate about it. Like I remembered one time, you ugma na lang ni ba ugma lang ni. But you know, for me, like no, I can't because it's already the deadline. I was gonna ruin the reputation. Yeah, because of, uh, so. of course, if you hire somebody, they won't care yeah. as much as you get. Which uh, exactly? Which I don't know. I guess you can't blame them because yeah, that's because, not their own thing. Know. So how did you get? Yeah, that's actually something that I think I've struck. That I've struggled with before. Like, how do you get like somebody to? So, so in that situation, what did you so do? So the, the first hire was. I'm not saying a hire because we're we're considering it as a partnership. Mm. I, I got my my cousin actually because I was not confident with audio. I'm not like the best guy. I mean, I have this. Uh, I I think it's a belief system that I had this. I was like, I can't do this. Like, if there's like a crackling audio, they send me. I can't fix it mainly because I don't have like. I don't have really the like how the Esser works, the you know the plosive oh. works, the all the technical stuff. Oh. Back then, back then, oh. like you know, so I was like, I need someone who, uh, to help me out. So I had this cousin. I mean, uh, you probably know him. He's a, uh, he's a guitarist and also. Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, it's Arian Miguel Nelias. Uh, he's a. Uh, so he he works. Uh, I mean he he does Zubu Studio before. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think I saw. Yeah, 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 I think I know him. Yeah, yeah. So he's a guitarist of DOC now. So mm. you know, but yeah, he does. He he knows the he has the know how of everything. And I was like, hey, you know, let's partner partner with this. Like you do the audio stuff and you you do the edit. Th- I mean, if you can learn the editing as well, then that's great, right? But if if you can just improve the audio, because you know most of their DIY uh, podcasters they have this. Uh, set up where it's not so good, so we we edit it, we improve it. So that was the first time I was like thinking of a partnership with them with podcast engineers, and and eventually he did the editing as well. So I uh, yeah, that's good. I, I delegated already. Thing was like that was the thing. So he was doing it, but I don't think he see the vision of it at yeah, first. Yeah, he's not as passionate. Yeah, as he's not. It, passionate. Wasn't, I mean, it was your baby. Yeah, basically. it was basically my baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, so he, you know, he said like, yeah, I, I, because he, he comes in, he does it part time mainly, so he comes in late at night for me. So and it was supposed to be released the next day or at their time, like the next morning. So I like. Can I do this next time? Like, like I'm so sleepy, right? I can't finish this, and not not giving him a, a bad impression or anything. You could cut it out if you like. Uh, I don't know, but yeah. like it, it's not no no knock on him. It's just yeah, that yeah. like you guys just had different visions of us as what yeah. was what it was like. Yeah. Uh, to him, it was just a part time thing, extra yeah, income. Maybe it's uh, yeah. He didn't see anything about it at that oh. time, mainly. But yeah. So what I did was I was the one working it. Like I came from a whole. Full day activity at that time, and man, he can't finish it. So I, I had to work like. So you're the one non. who put in the extra hours. Yeah. So, uh, so that was the first thing that was happening actually, mainly during the first year, first few months of it. So there, there was not no money coming in basically. So I had to pay like. So what I did was I, I I'm, I'm I'm a systems guy. I learned more about it. I I studied more about it, like E Myth, uh, Michael. Gerber and all of those stuff that he E-Myth, oh, that's a book right yeah that's a book okay. so was it called E-Myth yeah so E-Myth and the one thing that's, those are the books that I kind of shaped me what I have been doing now so by uh, the one thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan and the E-Myth E-Myth is Michael Gerber okay so uh, the, the, it was about system building a system with your business so what I did was since I I mainly just, you know, uh, come up with a system that 
that if it's just editing, I'm just gonna pass on the editing at first. So, so I learned mainly that the audio guy, so the the fixing the audio, making it good. So I, that was the thing I started with. I focused my you know energy there because my my partner back then already like went on his way. Oh. He can't handle my he attitude. I guess I don't know what happened. Oh, he did his own thing. Yeah, he did his own thing. But you know, so I I focus on improving that. And now the editing stuff is taking my, much of my time. So. I find someone in an editor. Just focus on the editing. He doesn't have to know about audio at all. So I just, uh, I had this. I use Logic Pro. So it's like it's pretty cool with Logic Pro because you, you have this file and it's it's all everything there. Like you don't have like to have a a separate folder where all the files are. So it's just like one file. You transfer it. Ah, uh, so it's like a, a big computer. file. Yeah, it's it's a big file. But the thing is, it's you can open it with mm-hmm. the same version of Logic Pro in another computer. Uh. So you just I just pass it on like airport. Yeah, moving it around. Is yeah, it's easier. pretty easy. Okay, so okay. I, I started fixing the plugins here. It's already set. He, all he needs was to just transfer it to another computer and it's just edit it. Like, you know, cut. So you guys don't have to be in the same room? Doesn't have to be in the same room. Doesn't have to be that he change it. No, oh. My settings, it will be changed right on. Like if what I left off with this work, he can continue with it. Bro, wait. So before we get to that, so like, so how... Let me just recap a little bit. So, uh, you first got somebody to help you out. It didn't work out, so you learned how to do it yourself. <laughs> exactly. No? And then when you finally were confident enough, I don't know who knows how many hours that you, that you, that you, hours of work that you put in, but when you're finally confident enough to, to do it, that's when you yeah. delegated it to somebody else. Exactly. Yeah. No? I, I focus on the least, I think the least, I mean, the easiest oh. job. I focus on that. If it's the, you know, it's it's easiest and it takes most of my time, I delegate it. So that's when I delegate. For, at first, I was like, I think I can't delegate the editing because that's when you listen to, you have to understand the whole conversation. But eventually, I found out like this guide, I prepared it. Like I have a guide already for training. Like these are the things you have to cut off. These are the things that you think that we think that we should, you know. Because some podcasters, they, they record and they just allow the editor to cut some parts if it felt awkward it felt too promotional on the guest side so I tried to train people now to do it to make those decisions yes to make those decisions so at first I was just thinking of editing just relaying the editing now then eventually I set up a system to make automated the, improve the audio basically just uh. put it in a pro, an app and I click one click there it's a module chain so like I don't know what it is it's like it's like you Put in the noise suppressor, so it's like a. So I auto. I was think. I at the back of my mind, I was thinking of how to automate things, how to make things faster, how to make things like get the also brain out of it. Also, how to make it easier said for your for, for your, somebody for somebody who doesn't have any background with audio, right? So I, I was thinking that way. Like I always think that way now with with whatever. So so like the that first like I automated the the fixing of the audio. So there's this app now that I have even in Logic Pro where the plugins are just which is one click or just have the template at all. Oh yeah, yeah right. The, the same have the template. Now, you just drag it there and it's done, right? Yeah, because me I'm since uh, I like I'm doing right now I'm the one doing I'm doing everything for the podcast. And I noticed that for the vast majority of the podcast I'm doing the same Thing. things over and over and over again. No, so I'll do like some noise reduction, some equalizer, some <laughs> yeah, right. compressor, and then that's it. Yeah, so it's basically no. the same thing. So what I did was I had this automation now that uh, anyone like yeah, I just put the brains out of it. Like you know, you don't have, you don't have to like have the skills now. Just but of course there's like metrics before because sometimes it, it's not hundred percent proof, right? Like you run the audio there. And it improves. It it's not like that. Like yeah, well, the ear, yeah. your ears have to be the final, the final, uh, yeah, thing. So I, I also have this system now. Like you know, you have to test it if the raw files is better than the you know. So that's it. So uh, simplified everything, delegate the easiest stuff, and eventually grew from there. So mm. I now have like uh, super easy now. Once people, once I hire, I I call it onboarding. I onboard a client once they're in. I, I I like basically I put up samples and all, and once they're in, they have the shared folder that they can put in the raw files, and they can they also have another folder for the edited. So it's all there, and also it works for my for my for my people who for I outsource. Yeah, basically for my team. So they just check it there, and 
you know, they so important that you're putting up a system with, with all of these things, uh, no? Okay, basically. you don't want to start from scratch with every client. Like you don't want like with every piece of work you're starting from zero. Mm. That just makes the work so much longer and and so much more difficult. That's oh, mainly okay, Upwork. So, so and, yeah, you would send, you'd put a message in, on Upwork, but you would link to your website. Mainly, yeah. So you apply to it. Like you apply to Upwork. But of course, you have to have like a good profile there. At least have a five-star rating or something. So eventually, I had this because my previous jobs were not related to audio editing. So I have to optimize my, my profile. And yeah, luckily over time, I got some good reviews now. It's all about five stars. It's mostly podcasting now. So people, when they look at my profile, I think they... They think that yeah, this guy's reliable. Oh yeah, because that's and, important. So there's some social proof in a way. Yeah, and it's crazy because when you when I first applying it, I had this you know a, a meager rate like five dollars because I was thinking like that's I think that's you know I I will beat the price for others. But the thing was it was counterproductive actually because I don't know there's something psychological I guess with rating yourself so low too low. That's what I do with my pricing as well now. If, if you're too low, people will misjudge you. Like you're you're the cheap, you know. You're, you can't offer quality. You can't possibly offer quality service by pricing yourself too low. So what I did was I increased it to ten, and eventually to thirteen, and eventually, you know, I went, just kept and, going up. Yeah, and I got this. I'm I'm now at more or less twenty. But the thing is. I got more clients now than before when I was like pricing it too low. Mm. It's amazing. It's it's interesting. That's how I played it at Upwork. And, if, and I guess people, also it's a mixture of you getting a better rating also. Also better clients as well, right? Yeah, so, that's right. So yeah, before uh, that's right. yeah because it's important. Yeah, you know, like I think we forget sometimes that there's a good, there is such a thing as a good and bad client. Yeah. yeah. Right? So at first, yeah, I was having mostly bad clients. I could like, yeah, I could think any any project is taking a lot of time, but right now I am catering to a certain type of clients. I'm very specific. So uh, I I my dream before was to like handle like because I've been ra- listening to Radio Lab and all at the past, right? And they're they 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 have this like NPR kind yeah. of podcast with storytelling, yeah. there's, there's music background. That thing is really hard to do. That's really hard to do. You know what? <laughs> so I, 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 I love listening to those podcasts also. Uh, I think there is... Uh, I forgot what I was listening to. But you know the guy who started Gimlet? Gimlet? Gimlet Media. So they... You haven't heard of this? Okay. You listen to this uh, podcast called Startup. Go oh, Startup. Startup the podcast. No, I haven't. Uh, you should listen to that. It's so good. Just listen to season one. The very first one. So this guy... He used to work in This American Life, uh, oh, Planet okay. Money. I forget his name. I'll link to it in the show notes. And then, so he wanted to start a uh, a podcast company. His whole first season of the of the of startup that's his first podcast was his process of starting that company. Oh, so really? pitching to venture capital, anana. Anyway, really interesting podcast. But he has something out there where they talk about how they make. Those NPR type oh, NPR podcasts. Type podcast. So, by apparently, so they'll do an edit, and then they'll listen to it in a room, like in a boardroom, with a bunch of editors, and then they'll make notes. Oh my gosh. So, so yeah. So then, so imagine. So let's say it's an hour long. Uh, it's like heavy uh, production, right? Heavy. It's like a, it's so like a movie or something. Yeah. So it's imagine. It's like let's say it's an hour long uh, episode. They will listen to it, make notes. This was good. This was good. This needs to be taken out or this needs to be shortened a very specific and then so then all the notes are in and then they'll do another edit and then they will listen to it again in the same so it's not just one editor exactly it's not just one person doing it so that's why it's so you notice like every episode is really good super amazing right no so yeah so that's the thing so I I always dreamt of being able to do that but over the course of like two years or so, I couldn't basically do that, right? So that the, now you've mentioned that the the, the it's production, a whole different process. It's a whole different process, See? and they have a team for that. Oh, and then you're do, so you're doing the more it's like more like interview, interview type, type. Okay. yeah. So cleaning up the audio is pretty much basic, basically. But the thing is, uh, I also 
because I I got some of those clients that you know who who wish to have those their, their podcast to be like that. And of course, I have to say no to them. Uh, at first, I like yeah, I can do this, and then you know end up costing me too much time, also making me frustrated because you have to like patch up the the audio, you find the audio for it. So, so I now I just settle. I learn how to say no. Mainly, that's that's a really good thing when it comes to service type of business. Like you learn who your uh, audience or your client is. Who you have to really define them, who they are, what they do, or what type of podcast they have. In that Very way, good. I could say no and say yes. And some of them, they could be like they can't afford. And that's good because they could, could afford and mainly those clients who can't afford not, not to you know, say mean things to them, but mostly they're the ones who are really hard to deal with. Mm. Like they're the ones who are like, Oh, I can't, you know, they, they have a lot of things. They have to, they have a lot of issues basically. So, so I've, I've learned that those who are, who has this, who pays well, who are, you know, has the capacity to pay, they're mainly the easiest ways, easiest clients to deal with. So. It's funny, no, because you think that it's it's funny because sometimes, especially if you're doing like client work, it's so tempting to say yes to everyone who is willing to write you a check. Mm. And yeah, that's the usual mistake. Yeah, people. It's the it's the usual mistake. So, and and but life becomes so much easier when you get to define exactly what it is you do. And then just and then you get to say no to everybody else mm. who wants other things done, and then the and then you just get known. You 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 build a name for yourself mm. doing that very specific thing. Yeah, and then that allows you to charge competitively, and at the same time, I, and it makes the job really easy. Like you know, I, oh. I'm enjoying it now. Like um, there was one time I had this client. Uh, she was really like. Uh, Pretty much, you know, she was really nitpicky with all of the things. So, but I, I, I kind of like, you know, I, she pays well. Like I, I try, she was able to come up with the payment that, that I, I set for her. But thing was, she was like, she like, there was this, I really did my job well with the editing. I know I can't, I, I've, 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 you know, edited so well. But at the end of the day, like when she reviewed it, I'm not sure why, maybe she, she just can't find a way to say no to, to like you know you're too expensive now. Like we can't afford you now. But he, but she, ma- she mentioned it in an email in a really nasty way that made me feel like super. I, I think it was a feedback like you know yeah this editing was so bad or stuff like that. So she mentioned it in a way that really kind of like condescending, degrading, you know something like that. Uh, but uh, you know it made me feel sad at the same time really anxious about the whole thing so i'd rather have not that kind of clients like you know <laughs> i I'd rather stay away from those and anyway, anyway, so i you fired uh, her you fired the nah, she she fired me mainly but, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing was like you know i rather have clients that you enjoy working with that's oh, no, the main that's point true. right it's like even if they don't really some of them uh, don't really hit the the pricing i i give them and i i understand I, sometimes i i take them because of their how they you know their their costs mainly if what they're doing is really you know helping others like and also like i also like enjoy working with them i have this gut feeling now and I, when i con- converse or i usually talk to them on skype before or you know do a conversation prior to really having them as a client so when I get a good feeling with them, then they're fun to be with, and that's it. That's yeah. That's how I find my clients now. I think. Well, anyway, we should. I want to get to. I I think we can keep going uh, with <laughs> with uh, with the client work, by because like there's a lot of things that I can relate to, in a way, and I feel like it's really important also because, like, one like a lot of people they they start up a they start a client based business and then they just they get swamped. And then and then they start complaining about there's too much work for too little a price. But the the truth is, you have to figure out. It's not things like this don't come easy. But like everything that you just told me, you didn't know about that on day one. Yeah. But this is like, I mean, this is what you were talking. Maybe we spent thirty minutes talking about it. But this is you learn this through years of exactly. 
of doing Wrong it. Error. Yeah. So how long? How long were you? How long were you doing the? How how long when you started to now? Uh, so <laughs> podcast editing, I've been doing that for like for when I first started, it was one year. Then it got started uh, the brand called Podcast Engineers. Then that's two years from now. So. Oh, so or like, two and a half, basically. So yeah. this is you three years later grinding, grinding it out, and then learning also along the way and figuring yeah. out what works and what doesn't, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, and then three years. It's still a long time. I mean, but, but if you look at it, I started online. I didn't figure this all out. Uh, like some people ask me, how are you able to do that, right? But the thing is, I started online, working online for eight years now. So, ah, mo ba? so yeah, I so was, you were working online yeah, doing the VA thing for five years, for, yeah, for yeah, you, until I figured out a way to really, you know, make up oh. a considerable, you know, good amount out of it. So, the, people don't see that. <laughs> Mona, yeah, people exactly. don't see that, right? Like I was doing those jobs that just gives I, me I, eight thousand, five thousand a month. I feel like um, prob- like the problem sometimes is people aren't patient. They're just yeah, like yeah. they're like, all right. I'm gonna do this, and then next month it's going to be so much better. Exactly right. Diba? So, so the the skills that I learned on handling clients, like uh, really like the soft skills, basically like talking to them because they're Americans, right? Most of them are from the outside. So, like figuring out, like having that gut feeling. I don't think I got it like in two years span. Like you figure it out. No, that was in the beginning, but that wasn't right. So That's it was eight at years the first. Ago. Yeah. So figure out who those who will not scam you because a lot of them are. Some of them are really scammers. Like you get clients who doesn't pay you at all. Oh yeah, we're not even talking about the billing, about how to make sure you get paid. <laughs> you get paid, right? So you, you get to. It, it takes time to figure those out, and yeah. So maybe two years. That was like when it like hit through the scene <laughs> when I first started I had to take three jobs full time had to like never you know just to earn like a certain amount so yeah I would say I won't say it's luck purely luck because I've gone through those so it, it was like eight years in the making mm. so, well yeah. well now, I, I, like I said we could we could keep talking about this but I want to make sure that we touch on the big picture podcast <laughs> no? yes. uh, as you know uh I like I I subscribe to it and I was very happy to be a guest in one of the podcasts. Yep. Uh, just to and I really like that there's another Cebu based podcast. To be honest, right? Can you can you talk about it for a second? So what is the Big Picture podcast? All right. So I've been into podcasting, right? And podcast and production mainly. And why don't we have it here, right? So that was the question, like. But the thing was, the big picture brand, I thought of it like way before as well, like, uh, five years ago. Like, I was thinking of, cause I, well, my story was I graduated from college, took a nursing career, but, but I didn't push through with it. I didn't, I found out that I realized, I, I mean, it's not the thing that for me, I, I hate working in a hospital. It makes me depressed and all. And then you were also part of that group where like so many people were taking up nursing and then yeah, all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah, I was on the bandwagon basically. Oh, and then all of a sudden. Yeah, and then closed their doors, yeah, right? like all these countries closed their doors <laughs> to new nurses. So, and so, then, so I was in, but when I think about that situation, I, I, I thought about like, why did I choose nursing? So it ended up, I just chose it because my best friend took it. Like, you know, I, at that time I was really, I don't know anything about choosing my career or what I will do in my life at that age. And I think it's too early for people to really figure out what they want at like, you know, senior high, right? You know, you don't really know what you want to do. Yeah. And you choose a career that you'll be stuck with five years, four years and possibly you'll, you'll become your profession, right? And, and if, even if you don't love it, we're just stuck with it. So, so I wanted to have like this. That was my first thought with what the picture picture was like an acad- academy or you know like a a blog perhaps or a a course a a vocational course just to figure things out. Mm. <laughs> so good. So to yeah. figure things out, like what the like you know you really see your life, the big picture of your life, what you really want to become. And I even like thought of like you know what, go on a sabbatical leave after graduating high school. Like you'll stop. <laughs> Just don't take a college course just yet. Like, figure out what you really want. You were and, thinking about this after college. Yeah, I was thinking, of, like, after the failure of not, not being able to really work abroad or whatever. Mm. Not really. Wasting my four years mainly, right? Ah, that's what because, it felt like. Okay. Yeah, so I, I felt like I, I wasted all those five years instead of just starting something, right? 
So that was the whole concept of the big picture. And eventually, it, it tied up as well with the whole thought of, like, we were thinking of, like, how can we make this as a brand? Or how can we make the podcast? What, who is our audience? So we started because my friend, to, uh, Con- uh, Joe, ma- mainly my co-host now, mm. mentioned me, like, we should, Joe, we should start uh, a podcast, right? Joe Li- Librero. Librero, okay. yeah. So, so we should start a podcast or something. Like, but yeah, but, that, that was the time I started like uh, podcast engineers already, and I was in uh, thinking about business already. And I was like, "So you know, you're I, in the middle of podcast engineers, and then you're doing all this engineering work yeah, for like, podcast for podcasters, but you had no podcast of <laughs> no your podcast, own." Right? Uh-huh. And you know, it, it would be great to have one. I mean, it's ironic, like you're helping podcasters and you don't have your own podcast. So I was thinking, like, I should have a, our our own podcast. So. We, Joe and I reconnected because we're part of the same group before. And it's so like, like, let's start this. And we were thinking, like, I shared to him what my vision was of the big picture. Because mainly it was mostly, I, I plan to start it as a blog. But, uh, like, uh, like, uh, entrepreneur.com blog says it's like, I was thinking of like getting people, enlightened people to like contribute to the blog. But it didn't pan out because I was too lazy and all. And yeah, it didn't work out, but I had the domain. It's all in there. So I was just posting quotes on Facebook page. So I was like, we shared our ideas and we thought, like, what? So if we, if there was one person we want to talk to that was true to us, both of us as well, was that we want to focus on helping like the Filipinos mainly. So uh, a lot of us, me personally, came up, came from an OFW family. So I just get to spend like two years. When I was 24, I just get to spend two years with my dad mainly. Yeah, but your just dad go is... home like once a year in a month's time. Yeah, so like so you, you get crazy. to spend th- like a month, one month a year with your dad. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that was crazy, right? So, and but, also, what, but that's like the reality, that's the reality of being a Filipino of, right now. Most of, yeah, a lot of us. So, so I was, and, and Joe here was uh, also stuck with a job that he didn't really like it was so stressful it was draining the life out of him and it was nine to five job and he has to like sh- like face the traffic each day to go to and you know he he's now in the into property management now but so we thought of like how can we help others like figure out or like you know change that mindset like poverty we were everyone is in this poverty mindset like you know there's no opportunities here in the country so ah, yeah let me so you didn't you didn't want like you did because the mindset here is that oh, if you stay in the philippines <laughs> there's no there's nothing here and then it's you so yes yeah, so you have to be you have to go to a to a first world country to make your money and then you wanted to push back against that yes that's that's the whole thing i want i want i want people to realize that there's a lot of opportunities here and that's have been that was our goal ever since since now we try to interview people who are doing their own thing here in the in Cebu mainly because you know we we prefer doing uh pers- or live call or live talk conversations with them and also we didn't want and since we're tackling those people who are still starting out or those people who really don't who are working or stuck with their 9 to jo- 9 to 5 jobs and or and uh, uh abroad working abroad so we we want to get them the idea that they can also do it. So we don't want to hit the, the like those who are really hundred steps ahead. Like they've been there, they have really an established business now, or no, not the Bo Sanchez type. We want to focus on those who still started their business like a year, or you know, or still processing it, or like you know, just a like, couple of steps ahead. Yeah. Not those who are. Making it not not like not the multimillionaires not the like multi- not the not the Gaisanos not the <laughs> exactly who's the guy who are the ones who own Oak Ridge Liu? Liu I forget yeah no I I, I just bring that up because uh, I, I I should link this to the you know I want to link this in the show notes on the side because there was a we were we were part of a previous podcast mm. but you you met my friends Alan Kalil. Oh, kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we had that third world start third world podcast. Stars, yeah. yeah, one of for me, one of the best episodes that he produced was he recorded a talk by the son of the guy who owns, uh, of Oak Ridge, mm. kind they own pen shop, they own oh, Matim really? Matimko, I think. Really good, really good podcast episode. He was just recording the guy talking. Mm. 
Wala lang. So like, but not those people. Yeah, may, because, maybe like, we will get there. I yeah. mean, we will have like a separate segment, I guess, possibly. But we want to get those people who are still with their five steps, ten steps ahead. That way, people who will listen to our show would realize that, hey, I can do that as well. Like, you know. It's relatable. It's, it's more relatable, relatable mainly, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing with us. We want them to make, take the next, just mainly a small step. Because me, I'm, I'm a pretty lazy person. I, I, I would say I'm lucky and I'm probably blessed, blessed by God <laughs> with what I have now. But I, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, I did this on my own. I mean, there's a lot of uh, experiences in my life that made me this way. So, I would say that, like, if if I can just help them take the next small step, and I'll be happy with that. I'm I'm glad to have that impact in their lives, and that's it. That's it. Like, you know, that's the big picture. It's all about just making you take that next step, no matter how small it is. Yeah. Did you? Uh, so, how many people have you guys interviewed over the? Over uh, like we started uh, one and a half that, year ago. Like to be yeah, like when you guys started, you guys started a little bit slow, right? Like yeah. you didn't have that many episodes, but recently you've been, been pumping them up. out. Yeah, yeah. So how many how many interviews have you guys? We done? had uh, we just had uh, our thirty fourth interview last week. So uh, so right, a couple of weeks just back. Do like um, <laughs> what have you learned from your guests? Do any does anything <laughs> stand out? First thing that comes to mind. Well, a lot of. Uh, like one, actually, one guest we interviewed that was into franchising, and I got into franchising as well. Like I, I invested in their, in their uh, shake stalls. So yeah, so uh, it's interesting. People, their journeys. No matter, everyone has a story to tell, and it's amazing how, like me, like Oma diet. I got it from a guest that we interviewed. Oh, uh, Human. Who did you get Uman. it from? So uh, we got it from Ed Zibanyas. Ed Zibanyas. So he's. Yeah. The, he's he he's one he's somebody that you interviewed in yeah. the big picture. Yes, uh, the show hasn't released. Yet. I don't know. It hasn't it's released yet. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, by the time this comes <laughs> out, that's probably, probably yeah. out. Yeah, so, so I'll, I'll link to it. So it, it, you know, he he introduced it. Well, he, we were about to interview him, and I was like so excited of how his results were. Like you know, three four months mainly, and he lost like seventy pounds something. Mm. So, it's a lot, right? I'm over. So I was like so excited. Even before we interviewed, I'd already tried it. I'd tried it for a week already when we interviewed him. And, you know, it's, it's nice to, like, people, like, you know, you get, you get tidbits of, of, uh, of knowledge from them. And anything and, else? Anybody else stands out? Like, uh, oh, uh, like, uh, Charmaine Ong, the Leon. Ah, of, uh, um... yeah. yeah. Pop district? Pop district. So yes. You, you can just see how amazing uh, anyone can do it. Like, she's just very young, right? And now she's made a brand. The people, like, may, might have, like, impacted a lot of people already. Like, you know, who hasn't visited Subo Mercado or Pop District Bazaar? So. Yeah, and then yeah. organizing those bazaars is yes. no joke. And it's, and it's for her, it's really fun. I mean, it's. was started with an idea, so it's. That that made me realize like you can you can be you can be anything like you know you can start anything here in in Cebu in Philippines in the Philippines and it's it's just a matter of like being inspired to do it and just acting on it and you know I wonder if I wonder if because like the thing is my thinking is like a lot of people are just also not meant to be because of course we're talking about the entrepreneurship side no. And a lot of people are just not meant to be entrepreneurs. And then it's easier to just, uh, I mean, no knock on, not, not a knock on the people who, who are not meant to be entrepreneurs, but like sometimes it's just easier to have a job, mm. no? And then I guess if it's just, if it's having a, if it's just to have a job, I wonder, maybe that's why people like to go abroad because they don't, it's very rare for the OFW who goes abroad and starts a business there. Yeah. Where it's mostly, you know, they they work for somebody. Yeah. No? Mostly. I wonder. Because starting starting a business or being in entrepreneurship, it's a it's a whole different animal also. Yeah. It it can really take over your life. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But in because, a good way. Like if it's something yeah. you enjoy, like you. If it's something yeah. that you're you obviously 
have thought a lot about it in the past three years, the podcast engineers, and then and then now the big picture podcast. Yeah, yeah, and even even the big picture, we don't we don't earn from it. Uh, we see it. I, I I also believe that if you just do something that you're passionate about, so this is like my passion project. So I do it mainly because I just knew, I just know perhaps that someone might need this message. Someone out there might, you know, like life might be changed or at least and make them think that there are other ways. So, so that's the thing. So uh, I, I there think other, other ways ex- aside from like going abroad. There, yeah, yeah, or even even the thinking here. of like some of them just want to be in a job. I think that's playing safe. I, I mean. I think anyone could earn more. I'm not saying that you have to be an, an, a full-time entrepreneur. You could do investing, right? You could do stock market or just invest on a Xerox copier or something. Or you could just, <laughs> or you could do a side hustle. Exactly. So that's the thing I want. Uh, I want people to to because the the main point or you know the why behind the the why we want to have freedom is mainly because we want to spend time more with our family or or. G- do the things that we really love. We mean not, nothing wrong with a job that if that's what you really love. Like it's something that, you know, if some of us, some, I know a, a couple of friends who are into uh, media production and they really love it. Like, uh, like the, the two artists, right? Like it's, 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 like, it's a business mainly. <laughs> but, oh yeah, Boots? Yeah, Boots, Boots right? I oh, know why Boots is an entrepreneur. That's yeah, his that's thing. Yeah, that's his thing, right? But, yeah, yeah. you know, but we if, were, if, well, for the, for the, <laughs> For the listener, before we hit record, we were talking about Boots Brandon. I interviewed him. It, it came out recently for yeah. the Zero Three Two conversations. Listen to it. I'll link to it in the show. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful, a powerful story. Yeah. 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 He's an example of he started from zero, from nothing. Zero, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, he's living the life that he wants. He gets to exactly. travel a lot. I, I even envy the, those people. But, you know, I, I like me, I'm still like, you know, there are people who really, I, I'm not saying podcast, podcasting came in because like it, it was, it was a job that I really love. I mean, but it was not something I'm passionate about. If I, if you were to talk about passion, I would have been a guitarist or something like I'm in a band, right? But some people really like, you know, he, he was into skateboarding and he really did it right now. I mean, he's into tattoo, but I, I'm not sure if where he's, I think he's passionate with both of them. Or well, mainly, he, uh, oh, for boots. Yeah, for well, boots. his passion was was skate, and then he, in a way, he sort of, kind of, also fell into yeah. tattooing. Like I don't know where you are in the episode. I don't think you finished it yet. But like for the longest time, like he was, he would, he would do, he would. It's in the it's in the podcast. He would do he would tattoo people, but he would have he. At, I think there's like a year or two where he had no tattoos. Oh, really? Yeah, like him mismo had no tattoos, but he was already tattooing other people. <laughs> no, now it's obviously a lot. Diff- now he has like his whole, his two arms are full of tattoos <laughs> and everything. But it is a good story. Yeah. No, yeah. but like I also, well, you know, if we if we're gonna go back to like your passion, like you know, like me, I I, I mentioned earlier, like I like to play basketball. No one is gonna pay me to play basketball. <laughs> exactly. No yeah, way. Level it. So yeah. you have to. There are some. It's a balancing act, I guess. Or, yeah, get rid of some delusions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you have to touch uh, a touch of reality, right? Oh, no. oh, like, but even like the even like a like podcast engineers, like you didn't know that you would love doing it. Yes, exactly. Because I'm I'm all for learning, right? So every time you edit a podcast, you're learning as well. So you know where do you get that? You're getting paid to learn. Oh, you're mainly. listening to these. Oh my people gosh! Talk about yes, and good these are brilliant people. Uh, They're not. The fact that you're doing a podcast means you have something to share. Oh yeah, right. That's true. Like you know, you can't be just anyone doing a podcast. So, so that's the thing with uh with going back to the big picture. Like, I want people to really realize like that there's a way. There, you know, if the the thing that you're doing now, it doesn't mean that's the only way. There are options out there. You can you can do side income like uh. Like yeah, you know, so it's not about it's not a black and white world. Like there are there are a lot of options to choose from, and that's what we're trying to aim at. Like we're interviewing a variety of people, uh, like any like from from uh coming up with a bazaar or from having a franchise in business or even a freelancing. Like we interviewed Jude Bacalso recently, mm. so like he's she. 
he or she's doing she, it. She. She's doing it like <laughs> like a hosting stuff and all. And you know yeah, what? Jude was uh, the host of my wedding. Oh, really? Now, yeah. yeah. So she's really good with it. Yeah. And you know what? I'm, I'm gonna spoil everyone, but the, the thing is, she doesn't really know like. She does freelancing that much that she doesn't know where the next money will come from. That she trusts herself so much that she will always have food in her. Like, you know, she doesn't have a fixed job. She's like, yeah. she has this like, uh, Cebu Pacific, you know, brand ambassador, but she doesn't have a fixed job. And, but she, that, that, that trusting, that loving of her, of her, what she does, just, you know, just that's feed, that feeds her physically and, you know. Emotionally and all those. I know, Jude would be really good to have in the podcast. Jude does a lot of stuff. Yes. Jude does like writing and the hosting yeah, right, mainly. The thing is, you know, she doesn't have a fixed job. That yeah. yeah, I think that's that's something that like if you're used to. Yeah, you know, so like my wife when before she, so she used to be she used to have a job. She used to work in a call center, and then she got so used to having that regular income. But she, at, when when she gave birth to Manu, she decided that she wanted to spend more time with the kids. And unfortunately, uh, if you have the, if you're working in a call center, they really do uh, demand quite a bit of time. No, of course you get paid pretty well also. But she wanted, but she decided at some point to sacrifice the the pay for more time. And then that was a big stumbling that was a big block for her and it took her a while to to decide to get through it no and then now she's now she is with um aksa and oh, then so yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and then uh she's doing really well actually mm. no but even then better than before or? yeah yeah even better yeah. yeah but like even better yeah in in so many aspects which we won't get into but <laughs> but yeah but uh but that 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 um, that addiction to a regular paycheck. Yeah, there's a really good quote actually. Well, I can't remember right now. I'm gonna link to it also in the show notes. It's something like, like the the most addicting things in the world is heroin, oh, alcohol, okay. and a paycheck. Something like that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the point. Like you know, it's, anyone can side hustle. Anyone can side income. Like if they can't let go of their jobs, and at least like. I'm just showing to them that, you know, it's a hopeful, I want to live in a world where, where every, there's love everywhere, there's hope everywhere. I don't want to see a world where I feel so lonely, you know, I feel so lonely because I can't leave this job or I can't, you know, I can't eat the things I love or whatever. So I want to live in that world where people are helping each other. That's like, if I were to think about the really big version of the big picture, I want to see, like uh, the the you know everyone's a family, everyone's a friend, something like that. Like uh, everyone's struggling. Like I we I want to know that everyone. I want people to know that everyone's struggling, no matter how good or how well he is. Now he he in one way or another he's struggling with a part of his life, and I want I want people to realize that you know we're we're on on the same boat together, right? Like and. That's why we want, I want to show them that there's a way, that there, there's hope everywhere, everywhere they look. That's, it's a hopeful world. It's a beautiful world. Yeah. So, so, so that's like the, the basically end goal of the big picture. Like, you know, I build that th- kind of world. I think this is a good place to end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a long yeah. conversation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, uh, where can people find you? Oh, yeah. You can find me on, uh, I'm everywhere, I guess. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And what yeah, Dave Visaya? Dave Visaya, you can search it or Mioi. That's my mm. that's what my band friends called me back then. And uh, the brands are mainly the Big Picture podcast engineers, and yeah, that's it. The Big Picture, so that's the uh, the Big Picture dot ph for the website. It's you can search it the Big Picture Philippines on uh, and then podcastengineers dot com. Yes, podcastengineers dot com. All right. Thanks for uh, joining me in this conversation, Dave. Yes, I really love this. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Dave Messiah. So if, the, if there's anything about this episode, it just shows that with the internet today, 
it is possible to start something and even to make a living doing that thing. Like, Davis has story is, I mean, you don't, nobody's writing about it. Nobody is, nobody's saying that, hey, you can do a service on the internet. And, because, you know, a lot of this, a lot of the, a lot of the attention goes to like, I don't know, like uh, influencers or big events or people like making a big splash. But Dave is doing very well for himself with this podcast engineer. And he's, and he's, he's built a business that's able to, you know, let him do what he wants. And just follow him on Instagram. That dude is traveling like a lot. <laughs> He's living the life that he wants. And then that's the advantage of a business born in the internet right now. So it's fun. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. I hope it inspired you to do the thing that you want to do. And I'd like to announce again that we're on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash 032. A little update on Patreon. We're going to be releasing... Patreon exclusive 032 Conversations t-shirt soon. I just talked to Jake, my partner, and we had a design approved. And I'm just going to send him our our order. The Patreon exclusive 032 Conversations t-shirts are going to go out to the $5 or $10 subscribers very soon. If you're one of those subscribers, thank you so much for being on Patreon and it allows us to continue doing this podcast for free. Yep, it's free. But you know, if you're a Patreon subscriber, you're helping us doing it. If if you want to help us continue making this podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash zero three two. You can check the show notes. There's links there. And if you enjoyed this episode Please share it on social media. That helps us too. Give us a rating on iTunes. That really helps us. Give us a five-star rating if you liked it. If you didn't like it, you know, you can just tell us why. (laughs) How can we improve this little podcast? This 032 Conversations. Okay. On to the next one. On to the next podcast. Okay. So next Tuesday, we'll release a new one. Hope you enjoyed this episode with Devisaya. See ya. Bye.